New Year's is around the corner, and with that, the resolution to make your very first game. Perhaps it's your first attempt, or perhaps you have attempted this before. The matter of fact is, you have still yet to make your first game, and let me tell you, it also time it ain't all that easy. But don't worry, your boy's got your back. The first and foremost thing you should know about, and probably you heard many, many times before, is that longer games equals lesser success rate. And I know, it's obvious, longer the game, more time needs to be put into it, less likely to be finished because of the dedication, And but it's actually more than just that, because do you see, there's an amount of fatigue that gets built up as you develop your game. One of the things I like to compare making a game to is watching a movie, because you know you're developing your game each and every single day, and because of that, you're also thinking about the story of your game each and every single day, even if it's your favorite movie. At some point, you're going to grow tired of it, and then you're going to start hyper-analyzing absolutely everything to the point that you start criticizing it. And the matter of fact is that that sort of thing does happen to your game project. First weekend, things are going absolutely splendid. You're hyped, you're inspired. Half a year later, and well, uh, what game am I making again? <laughs> the other thing is that we all know that our very first game isn't exactly going to be our best game. I mean, we are still learning the engine after all, and we're also still learning about everything involved that ne is needed to make a video game. So why are you dedicating so many hours into your first game when you already know that it's not going to be your best or greatest work of all time? Save that for when you're much, much more experienced. In my opinion? Aim for half an hour, no more than one hour. Perhaps the biggest thing about making your game is uploading it and receiving feedback. Nothing's better than a feedback. Number two, and perhaps the step that most newcomers skip, is the fact that you gotta start with the paper before the maker. And of course, I don't mean literally a piece of paper. We are in a digital age, so digital notebooks are perfectly fine. I myself like to use OneNote just because it's easily transferable between my iPad, laptop, my computer, and even my phone. I remember back in my college days, I would always whip out my phone while I'm waiting for the class to start and just continue scripting along. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, your boy had many friends. Uh, yes, was not a lonely college, college life. I imagine a decent amount of you guys are students, and at this period of time, the last thing you want to do is write any more, write any more outlines. But trust me, they actually do work very, very much. You know, consider this. You're in your maker, developing your game, and then all of a sudden, BAM! You hit a wall. Except... You don't hit that wall until you're like one month into making your game. But if you were to script it all out first, rather than one month of fatigue and hard work, it's now like one week or a couple days of fatigue and hard work. So when it comes to what's on paper, there's really three sections that you really gotta, in my opinion, dish out. And it's the summary or the synopsis, make sure you know exactly what it is that you're trying to make. And also in this section, make sure you do outline the genre, the type of game, and especially the main components to your game. For example, let's assume Five Nights at Freddy, because I'm pretty sure we're all very, very familiar with that. Five Nights, bunch of animatronics that's trying to go out and murder you. And you're watching them on your fans camera, and you're gonna close the door before they reach you. Bam, that's all you gotta do. So now you have a goal in mind, and whenever you happen to go off path, you can always look at your notes to remember to come back in. Now, second section, and this is a section that most will skip, or more that we don't have a lot of experience with, and it's to create your characters. Creating your characters is an extremely important thing, because you see, it isn't the story that we relate most to, but instead, the characters. No matter who they are or what they are, we tend to put ourselves in their place. Now the third one, and this one you could kind of take shortcuts with, kind of depends on you, and it's to script out your game. Remember what I said about hitting that wall? You really want to make sure that you know what's happening in the beginning, the middle, did I say beginning? <laughs> you really want to make sure what's happening in the beginning, the middle, and the end. 
but also the transitions in between. Because sometimes we know exactly what we want to do, but we just don't know how to transition between those different sections. You do not want to hit the wall while you're in the maker one month in, you rather hit that wall when you're only a couple of days in, just typing away with words. Now, if you're like me, I'm actually the type of person who will actually write it out line for line and saying exactly what each character will say. But of course, you don't have to do it that way. You can just paraphrase and keep it in blocks of what's important. Which comes to my next point. Make sure you have the time to make and develop your game. As I mentioned before, I can only imagine that a good amount of you guys are students. And if not, then maybe you have a full-time job, and I can only assume that there are also other commitments. If you have all these sort of commitments going on, then there's probably it's probably not a great time to start working in the maker. But in my opinion, working on paper tends to be more readily accessible. Remember what I said about uh, being in college and having no friends? Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of you guys are eager, but trust me, the worst thing that can happen is things get very busy, so you gotta stop. And then two weeks later, maybe even a whole month later, you jump back into your maker and now you gotta decipher every single line of code that you entered. Hopefully, you did not leave any bugs for you in the future. I say as I stare at myself in the mirror. But you know, sometimes life just happens and things just gets busy. Which brings me to number four, track your progress. Now, I don't mean keeping a diary every single day and just writing exactly what you did. You can't do that if that works for you. All I really mean is, have a game page, have an Instagram. If you feel like it, have a YouTube. The point of it is so that you can always watch back and see where you left off. But at the same time, you also build an audience. And what's cooler than that? Because the most important thing is to receive feedback. And perhaps you don't want to make an Instagram, or you don't want to make a YouTube. Now the game page you probably shouldn't make. <laughs> Unless it is. One thing that I find to be very, very helpful in this day and age is Reddit and Discord. So find yourself over to the Reddit page, or find yourself a nice Discord. And let the world know that you are making a game, and let them know how it's going. Now the last thing I want to mention, and it kind of goes back to the thing I said previously, well, it's to inspire from others. Follow those within the community that you can inspire from, and also follow those within the same genre. Within the same community, because you can see what an experienced person can do with the engine that you can someday do for yourself. And if you manage to speak with them, well, they're very likely to give you some pointers and tips. And of course, you want to make sure that you follow within the same genre, though not specifically within the same maker, is because you want to make sure that you inspire from different ideas. As an example, I'm making a horror game in RPG Maker, but I am inspiring this puzzle from Resident Evil 2 Remake. Doesn't matter where you start, as long as you get the sequence, you solve the puzzle. Anyway, those were the five tips to help you get through your very first game. If you guys got any tips, then please be sure to mention them down below. But more importantly, if you are creating a game, then do let us know down below. Other than that, if you want more game dev stuff, I got devlogs and just dev talk, then consider subscribing. Till then, ladder. Boom.